Now, if you do that, they're all going to be building out of bonds. If, even if the U.S. intended to do that, to release that was stupid. So that's why a lot of people are building nuclear weapons. It's not cost that bad. North Korea is building big armies, rocket ships, everything. So is China. Because we ran those headlines. How stupid can you be? Military people are not right. Military people would be concerned with how do you bridge the difference between nations instead of declare war on them. So we will have a pentagon in Washington of sociologists, social scientists, who are there to try to bridge the difference between nations. That's the problem. Not killing them, bombing their cities. That's not a solution. That only builds hatred for the future, if you understand what I'm saying. So I am really putting it this way. What will people be like in the future? First, they'll learn about the earth. And they will be brought up not to want to hurt the oceans or the forest or cut them down. Some people say to me, will everybody be alike in the society you're talking about? In certain areas, yes. They won't hate anyone of a different color or different religion. They would not want to hurt anyone or kill anyone or rob anyone or hit them on the head and take their money. None of that. There will be a light in that area. There's nothing the matter with being a light in the same way, if you're sane. Now, unsane means not that you lost your facilitation. Unsane means you're brought up with artificial values. So most nations are unsane, particularly the leaders. Because if you ask any leader in the British Empire, you say, how would you stop cars from hitting each other? I don't know. How would you prevent forest fires? I don't know. <coughs> what do you do to prevent earthquake buildings from caving in? I don't know. Who the hell are they then? What are they doing there? <laughs> they tell you in America, write your congressman. You want women's rights? Write your congressman. What a jackass he is. <laughs> congressman doesn't know anything about that. When you fly in an airplane today, I'm a, I'm a commercial airline. You don't have to write the pilot and say you've been flying at an angle for three miles now, straighten up. He knows his business. The navigator, when you go to Hawaii and you see icebergs coming up, you say, I thought we're going to Hawaii. You have to write him. He knows navigation. So people that fly airplanes or manage ships, you never have to write the captain of a big line and say, look, we're going to Hawaii, but I see icebergs. You know, they know their business. Who are these people you have to write to? They must be dummies and tired and so. They should be at the forefront of human problems in government and not try to stop you from doing things, but to welcome you on the air. But what they do is manage news. If it doesn't look too good, you don't get it. I've never been on the air except once in America. But in other countries, when we were invited to Turkey, they gave me an hour and a half. And Turkey said, how do we build the first Venus project? Now, they invited us to Vienna. They gave me seven minutes with a whole bunch of academicians. I couldn't say anything in seven minutes. And that happened in other countries. So we don't go to any other country unless they give a chance to present what it is we wish to present. And then you get mad at it, you ask questions, that's the way to do it. But you don't get up and you don't really applaud until the guy gets through. So when the question comes, when you guys ask questions, I ask you not to be polite. And the question is how out of everything I say. And if there's things you don't understand, you have to let me know. Now, how many of you know there are metals today with a memory? It's called shape memory alloys. How many of you saw it in our film? Okay. There are metals today with a memory. And they were I mean, who invented it? Some Swedish guy, a metallurgist, was mixing different metals together. And he mixed nickel and titanium together. And he bent it and left it on a table near a heat lamp and it straightened out again. He didn't sit down and invent it. He discovered it. Nobody ever invented anything. They tell you in school that somebody invented the wheel, and that's the beginning of the technical age. A tree fell over another tree, and people pulled it, and it rolled. 
Glória a Deus. When that rod rolled, it was one stone in the way. It stopped the log from turning. So they shaved the bark off. This took a long time in the middle, so that the middle section was thinner, and the wheels were on the outer section. So nobody sat down and invented the wheel, or invented anything for that matter. Now, I said that they invited me to speak at Princeton University, and the name of the subject, man can't think of reason. That made everybody angry in the university, because they all knew that that could take the reason. So a guy from the optics department said, I don't agree with you before I even said a word. I said, well, what is it that you don't agree with? He said, man can take the reason. I said, give me one example. He said, well, there was not a camera at one time, and somebody had to think about it. Now, in China, a thousand years ago, they, if you were in a dark building, there was a little hole in it, you saw people walking upside down on the wall. If you've been in a barn which is very dark and there's a knot hole in it, you'll see cows walking on the wall upside down. If the sun's out and the barn is dark, that's where the pinhole camera came from. Nobody sat down and said, so start making camera <laughs> <laughs> What about the negatives? Somebody had to make a negative. The American Indians used to take berry juice and squeeze it on mats they made for the floor of the wigwam. They'd squeeze blueberry juice, cherries, and so they get patterned. But if a leaf fell on the berry juice, they picked it off, there was a print of the leaf. That's where the print came from. And people walking barefoot in the sand suggested the mold. And they said, when you make a mold, you put something in it. Nobody can sit down and invent anything. The first guy that tried to fly died. Probably the first hundred guys that tried to fly died. So if you do medical research and you work for three years on cancer and he finds out what doesn't work, I read this book and two years later I come up with a little bit of an approach to cancer. I get a Nobel Prize, he gets nothing. There's thousands of people just as sincere that work on problems that don't come up with a, an answer. You should never give a Nobel Prize to one person. All these people are hardworking trying to find the answers. So when you start giving out medals or jobs in a beauty contest, the girl gets an award. Did she make her face? Like soft as her and mold it in a <laughs> Then you give her some kind of medal. But if she's born that way, what the hell is that? <laughs> So the world we live in is a full ship and a crystal turkey. And you're not about to talk to people and turn them around. You have to demonstrate it. The shape memory metals that I was talking about is made of nickel and titanium. It's a wire. And you took that wire and bent it in form so it fell down Jesus Christ. Put it on a table, put a hot lamp over it, straighten it out and put it on a table and go like that and to go back to Jesus Christ. You can build a following. <laughs> now most people don't know where the earth came from, they don't know where life came from, and so they invented a God who made a man and a woman, then he kicked them out of that beautiful God. How did he do that? Snakes used to walk upright. And the snake said, eat of the fruit of knowledge. Who made the snake? God. But he loves you. <laughs> and then they said, fool around with your best friend's wife. That's what the tempter was. So the snake was finished so bad that God got angry at what he created. He said, from now on, you have to crawl on your belly. <laughs> so there, that's another thing they have about horses. The reason a horse leaves standing up, because some holy man wants to ask this horse to take him across the river. And the horse said, no, you don't have to sleep standing up. <laughs> we have all this stupidity. Galileo found seashells on the mountaintop. He took it to the Catholic Church and he said, maybe the mountain was once under the water, it was pushed up. And the church said, no, the devil put the stuff in it to be true. Anybody that believes in God, you must think that the kind of God man makes more like themselves. The guy that gets angry, creates flood, disease, that isn't God. And if you don't follow the Bible, according to God's teachings or your religion, you burn eternity.